here's the setup. And the diagram is really just to give you a bit of a nudge. Uh, if you didn't draw it, this is one of the few questions where maybe you could get away with doing the question without a decent diagram. Um, you've, you've been given two complex numbers, Z and W. Um, you're told that the area of the triangle traced out by Z and W with the origin is capital A, A for area. And then they ask you to prove this weird result. What you're required to prove is that, oh, there's an extra conjugate there. Z times the conjugate of W minus W times the conjugate of Z is that. Whatever that has to do with anything. Okay? Now, I kind of like to think, and I've mentioned this before, that sometimes questions in extension 2 are hard just because they are intimidating. Okay, you look at it, you're like, I don't even know where to start, all right? But calm down, it's all right. This can be done if you're patient with it and if you just think through the information that you've got, okay? For instance, the first thing I notice is that they tell me the area of the triangle is A, and that appears in this result that I'm going to head toward, okay? Does that make sense? So the first thing I'm going to do, because it's actually quite easy, you can do it as a two-headed student. The first thing I'm going to do is work out what the area of this triangle is. Okay? Now, uh, we know basically two ways to work out the area of a triangle. What are the two ways? The, 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 the U7 way of learning it is just the formula, which is half base times height, right? Um, base meaning any of the sides, and height meaning like what height? We mean perpendicular height. So you have a look at this diagram, and do you have the perpendicular height anywhere? No. The answer is no. Okay, so I'm probably not going to go in that direction. That leaves the other way of finding the area of a triangle, which is? Uh, well, usually we'd go half A, B, sine C. I mean, you could use the sine or cosine rule to find lengths in here, but that's a bit of a long way around. I'm going to go for half A, B, sine C. Now, have a look. Uh, if I say A and B, those are two lengths on the triangle, okay? Now you've got three, one, two, three. Of the three, which two do you think are the easiest to get to, to access? What do you reckon? Z and W. Yeah, I, I think the ones from the origin to Z and the origin to W. I mean, I guess we could work out this one, but it's going to be more complicated. It involves both of these numbers, whereas finding these two, you come to the origin, that's really easy, okay? So I'm going to write half. A, it doesn't matter which one's which, A or B, right? Uh, we'll call this one over here A, right? So by definition, the length of this side is mod Z, right? Or the, the absolute value of Z, right? So I'm just going to say that's A. Uh, if this one down here is B, then I'm going to say that length is mod W, the modulus, okay? Now, the last piece is sine C, right? Now the important thing about sine C, like which angle is it, is that when you've got the two sides, the angle you're interested in is the included angle, right? The one in between. So in this case, it's this angle in here, right? What's the value of this angle? Yeah, good. It's the difference between theta and phi. So I've got sine, and then the particular value you see I'm after is theta minus phi. Okay. Now, I guess I could play around with that a little more, but for now, let me just keep it up uh, in the back of my mind, because when you're, whenever you've got any kind of you know, required to prove result, right, you've got to know where you're going. Right? This is one of the reasons why in a trig identity proof, it's like, okay, well, we lay out for you what you're supposed to get to, because the way you manipulate one of these signs is based on where are you headed. Right? I mean, I guess I could have started doing this, but without knowing this is where I'm going, that's, that's a hard way to go about it. Right, now we're ready to actually set out this proof, okay? So I'm gonna have to look at either this side or this side. I wanna manipulate one of them to get to the other. Which one would you like me to start with? I'd probably go for the left-hand side, right? You could go for the right, but generally, I mean, that looks sort of simplified, whereas this is like a mess of different things that I guess are gonna combine together, collect like terms, all that sort of thing, okay? So Z, W conjugate, minus W. Okay, let's have a look at this. Left hand side. Okay, now we know the complex numbers can be represented in one of two ways, and they haven't given us a way yet. The question hasn't said this way or that way, so you get to choose. So, which are the two ways again? You've got a rectangular form, which is x plus i y, and then you've got polar form, which is cos theta plus i sine theta. Now, as soon as you say both of those out loud, 
it sort of tells you which direction you want to go in. Which one would you choose? Clearly, you should go for polar four. What's the big clue in what I've got on the board already that tells me polar four? Okay, yeah, look, this is where I'm headed, remember? Right? And it's got signs in it, and it's got, this is, um, this is the R at the front of uh, polar form, right? It's the modulus of the number. So polar form is a clear choice, right? So how am I going to write a number like, say, Z? How am I going to write that in polar form? Let me just write general polar form up here. This is how we would normally write polar form. Okay, where R is the modulus? So what's Z? How do I write that in polar form? What's it? Yeah. Um, the, the mod of z um, and then cos uh, theta. Yeah. 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 Good. Cool. There's z. So far, so good. How would I write w bar, the conjugate of w? Hmm. What's the modulus of conjugate w? It's still mod w, isn't it? <coughs> Right? When you take the conjugate, you don't change how far it is, you change it from being facing up to facing down. Yeah? So I guess mod w would be somewhere down here or so. Okay? Um, what's going to happen over here? Okay, so the, the, mod, the um, argument rather has gone down, it's gone clockwise instead of anti-clockwise. So therefore this is going to be negative phi, and this is also going to be negative phi. Uh, there, that's it. Okay. So it's a bit of a long mess, but that is Z, Z there, and W bar. In fact, maybe just for yourself, because there's going to be a lot of stuff on this slide. Maybe you want to label for yourself what's what. Okay? So <laughs> I've only done one half of this line, but that's okay. Be patient with it. Again, it looks intimidating, but it, just because it's long to write. Let's write the next bit. Okay, when we get to W, we already know how to write W because there's W bar. So it's got the same modulus. And what's the angle? It's just fine, right? It's just fine to get to W, right? So cos phi plus i sine phi, like that. And then I come to the last of my complex numbers on the four, uh, Z bar, right? So the modulus is still mod Z, like that. And uh, what's the argument going to be this time? Negative theta. Negative theta. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, uh, let me again label that so you can see what's what. That's a terrible brace, but you get the idea. Okay. Now, we've done a substitution. It looks awful, but that's as bad as it's going to get. Everything from here we can simplify, okay? 